guys? Welcome to my June wrap up. Erin is here to be my lovely assistant as we go through the 13 things that I read this month. So I don't remember if I talked about this at the end of my last month's wrap up or not because it was like right in between, but I picked up the sequel to The Winner's Curse. I couldn't get a copy of it which was The Winner's Crime, and I read that at the beginning, like at the, the end of last month, beginning of this month. So it was good. It was the middle novel in the series, and I enjoyed the different pace. It was a lot more heavy on the political intrigue side, mm. and I totally ship Kestrel and RN. They're just so perfect for each other. Anyways, the series seems to be taking a slight... Turn. It is nice that each of the individual books has a different feel to them so they don't stagnate and get old, which is nice. Same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I gave that four stars. The next thing I picked up this month is my really horrible copy of <laughs> Anita Blake Guilty Pleasures Part 1, which is book one, part one in the Anita Blake um, series this is the graphic graphic novel form, which I have not read before. So I really enjoyed getting back to the roots of the characters because I gave up on the novel series because I think Laurel K. Hamilton should have ended the series so long ago and she's just drug it on and just beating a dead horse, you know. But it was nice to get back to the roots of this series, which is, you know, back when Anita was kind of a badass before she just turned into a sex witch and um i really liked the art in this it took me a little while to get used to it kind of seeing the characters and it there it's very flowy and kind of victorian-esque with the, the big hair and the and stuff like that but i think towards the middle and the end i got into it and i realized that it really fit the story and the characters really well I think I would enjoy this one. I don't know. But. <laughs> I don't know if you want to... I, I mean, I think I enjoy, enjoyed it so much because of nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Because I know the characters well. We own it, so... We do own it. This beautiful right. copy. Yes, lovely. <laughs> I gave it five stars, and I would love to find part two. But the library doesn't have it. So the next thing I got is not this, but this is the closest thing I could find at the library today. Um, I read Star Wars Darth Vader Volume 2 Shadows and Secrets by Kieran Gillen, uh, which was really interesting, completely uh, from Darth Vader's point of view, looking at how he is maneuvering in like the inner circle of the emperor and trying to vie for power and to be his one right hand man and apparently i picked up the middle novel in a three issue run which i didn't know until the very end but it didn't matter i was able to jump into the story really nicely and just flow with the series and it was really refreshing i will read the other two one and three when i find them I saw this today. I'm not sure if this is even in the same run, but it says Vader, so I'm going to we'll try it. it. Yeah. It focuses on Vader, so I'm sure you'll enjoy it. I think yeah. so. I really like the character. Much better than Kylo Ren, but that's a whole other thing. I gave, uh, I gave that four stars. <laughs> the next thing I picked up was Saga Volume 1 by Brian K. Vaughn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is a series that has been very hyped up recently and I think rightly so. I finally picked it up and I see what the hype's all about. The art is fantastic. The story is very original. The Aaron has to be very selective about what pages he shows you. <laughs> it is very graphic. It, there's a lot of gore and um, very much mature themes. But it's got a whole bunch a whole cast of original characters. And the story is intriguing and fast-paced. And I will be continuing on in this series. I gave it four stars. The next thing I have, I 
don't have a copy and I'm so sad about this. I got I had to return it to the library before I could make this video. But it is The Wrenchies by Farrell Derrimple. I'm probably messing that up. But it is a graphic novel and it is so bizarre. I have never read anything like this before. So original in that um, I have not rated it yet because I feel like it needs a reread before I can really process how I feel. It was a really complex kind of mind game uh, kind of story. I don't know. It, um, it was like childish nightmare, time travel, zombie, just whole... I remember while you were reading it. You seem very confused. You're yeah. Talking about <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how to, how to say it. The the first third of the book, I had no idea what was happening. None whatsoever. Every page. I mean, it kept me intrigued, and I kept going. But I was just like, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. I don't know. How, time travel and zombies. What is this? I don't know. And then the middle, I finally get into it, and I'm like, okay, I get it. I understand what's happening. There's, you know, you have to time travel and pull this person from here and these people from here and you're going to save the world from this and that. I finally get it. And then the last third of the book just just completely threw a wrench in it. Oh my gosh. Like it threw the whole toolbox in there. I don't I don't know. Anyway, so I can't I definitely recommend it. But I do I would say that if you are not ready for a completely crazy story like definitely wait because it, it was insane so anyways that's what i read the next thing i read was ender's game by orson uh scott card yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> um so amy and i challenged each other i picked a, a book that she would not normally pick and she read it and she picked this for me and it's been on my tbr for a really long time but it has been intimidating for me for some reason. I feel like, especially with the cover, and like I saw the movie, so I don't know why I was still intimidated by it, but it seems just very hard sci-fi. But it was it was completely approachable and um, a lot more military sci-fi, which is the kind of sci-fi that I tend to enjoy. I'm glad you finally got around to this one too. Yeah, it, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I can't decide whether I'm going to read um, Speaker for the Dead or Ender in Exile next because there's some confusion about the order that you're supposed to read it in. And But I will be continuing in the series, and I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. The next thing I picked up... Uh, I didn't pick it up. We finished it. We were reading it to the children. Mm -hmm. And this beautiful thing, mm -hmm. Lost in the Snow, about a little kitten trying to find a home. This is uh, targeted towards second graders, and our five-year-old and four-year-old really enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. The four-year-old more so than the More five. so. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely, definitely um, little girl book. Yeah. Yeah. It's very cute, though. It was cute. I thought it was adorable. I... <laughs> I wanted to pick it up every night, you know, mm. as opposed to Wrinkle in Time. Which... Well, I want to pick that one up every night, so. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> I gave it three stars. The next thing I picked up, I got this from the library for our five-year-old, and I ended up reading it also, but not at the same time. This is a children's graphic novel, Zeta the Space Girl by Ben Hat. Hatke? Um, this is book one, or issue one, in a series. It is a story about a little girl who has to get up her courage and bravery and go rescue her friend who got sucked into a different, um, at least on a different planet, and she follows him, and there are aliens and robots, and she meets a she meets a giant talking mouse, and she's got like a whole cast of crew helping her to save her friend, and it's adorable. I gave it three stars. The next two that I picked up, I was very excited because I had just read Ender's Game, 
and I found the graphic novels uh, Battle School and Command School um, at the library which I flew through and I really enjoyed. I will say that if you have not read the novel definitely do that first. Obviously they had to cut a lot of things in in making this. You don't get to see inside Ender's head and how he strategizes which is definitely a huge part of the book which I really enjoyed. And also they had to cut out some of my favorite parts which were Valentine and Peter and their you know their plot and I guess not they're maneuvering, scheming. they're scheming, and um, what they're doing on Earth while Ender is at battle school. And they have child, child Peter very creepy. Oh, he's so creepy. Look at that. Oh, I love him. He's so cool. Um, yeah, so I gave each of those four stars. But definitely read the novel first before you pick those up. The next thing I read was Watching Edie by Camilla Way, which I won in a Goodreads contest a couple months ago. This doesn't come out until, uh, what is that, August? This is a psychological thriller about two women who are friends as teenagers and have a falling out. And then when they're in their early 30s, our main character, Edie, is at her wit's end. She's pregnant. She's about to have a baby. She's like having like a crisis. And um, the friend who she has not seen in years, just waltzes back into her life and kind of positions herself in there and makes Edie completely dependent upon her so quickly. And then you start questioning motives. And it it was very good. I really enjoyed the writing. It was, it was fast enough paced. It was well written. I liked the complexity of a lot of the characters. I liked how Camilla Way was able to write a character that you are not supposed to like and it doesn't drive you away from the story. You're still intrigued. You still keep reading. Um, I really enjoyed it. I you read it really quick. I did. Well, yeah. I feel like I had to keep putting it down for other things, but I, I did very much enjoy the story. I gave it four stars. Okay, and then I picked up issue number one of Howl's Moving Castle graphic novel. Um, I have never sat down and watched the movie, although the children love it. And this was interesting. It was a quick little read. And the art was, you know, it looked like screenshots from the movie. <laughs> I don't know if I'll continue on with it or not. It was very quick. Very light, but I don't know. It might just not be my cup of tea. I don't know. And the last thing I picked up was Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi. Can you sense a theme very much into Star Wars this month? This one, however, I did not enjoy. This was set at the very, 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 very beginning of the Jedi when they first formed the forces first discovered or formed or whatever. I thought this story, the art is beautiful. I love the art. I thought the story was overly complicated. There were too many characters and too many uh, storylines going on. I did not understand what was happening half the time. I did not have enough time to get connected to any of the characters. I didn't like any of the characters. I don't remember any of their names. I just it was a slog to push through i just didn't i wouldn't recommend it unless you you i don't know are a huge star wars fan i suppose mm -hmm. so i think i would give that probably two stars unfortunately mm -hmm. and those were the 13 things that i read this month make sure and uh watch out for our tbrs which will be coming soon Thank you for watching. Please leave me a comment down below telling me if you've read any of this, if you have different opinions than me, because I love hearing that. And thank you for watching. Take care.